did yesterday, uh, just to give you an idea as to what my thinking is when I'm actually going uh, into the markets. Okay, um, so yeah, let's uh, let's kick off. Okay, it's just an overview of what my trading was like yesterday. So, right, so uh, what happened yesterday is first of all, you've got to have a look on the uh, hourly chart on the DAX. I'm trading the DAX. I was looking at it from an hourly basis. If I go on the daily basis, uh, I would notice that the trend, as you can see on this chart here, the map, uh, the trend is downwards. Now, one of the problems which I have in my trading is that I am, uh, a sl there's a slight bias and it's a natural bias because as people, we tend to be optimistic and being optimistic, we want things to go up, so to speak. So generally speaking, a lot of times if I do a trade, I will uh, go on the long side, okay? Uh, not paying too much attention to the trend. That is a fault of mine. Now, you can still make money, and I have made money playing the long side in a declining market. And I'll just try and show you where. So if you look here, if you bought there, or if you bought here, or bought here, or bought here, or bought here, or even bought here, or there, yeah, you can see that you can be making money in a declining trend. But I would have to say that, and for obvious reasons, my biggest gains are when you are with the trend. Yeah, they say the trend is your friend. So we need to be uh, a bit aware as to where the trend is going. Generally speaking, uh, when I'm trading, I have three main charts up on the same asset class. And that will be the five minute, 15 minute, the hourly. And then from the time to time, I would zoom in and zoom out. Uh, for, to a daily, weekly, or monthly uh, to get an idea or to color. Now, uh, yesterday, uh, having seen that the uh, market was in a downward trend, I decided to have a downward bias and uh, I shorted the market. Now, this is the point where I shorted it here, around here. Okay, so here you can see it's gone up, it's gone down gone up it's gone down and what we look what looks like here is a, a bit of a like a head and shoulders pattern if you like so to me that was very very bearish and i shorted it and you can tell that you know i made some quite good money uh, when it got to the bottom there it was hovering around hovering around and uh, i decided at that point that i was just gonna lie down on my sofa take a break accept the risk and I did at my peril because it meet the price immediately went right up, okay? And this is a, a reversal, okay? What you've got here is like the inverse of these three bars here. So ordinarily, on a downward trend, that would be a good trade to play. And you just hold it, and that would be a stop at the top here. But the market has shown that this is the bottom and the duh, okay? It's indicated which direction it's going, and the market has followed that trend upwards, okay? So I got stopped out there. Now, I was up at that point uh, 700 pounds. So, you know, it was a bit, it was a disappointing, to say the least, especially as I was lying on my sofa when it was happening. I just wanted to take my eyes off it. I wanted to let it work itself out. Now, the good news is, but seeing it was a, a reversal of a trend, that was a confirmation. Uh, there are three rules which I trade by, which are trade what you see, trade on probabilities, and accept the risk. That last trade I was doing, I was practicing my accepting the risk. Here, we need to look at probabilities. And the probability is, if there's a reversal, a trend reversal, what is the probability that it's going to continue in that direction, i.e. on the long side, on the bullish side. And my money was with, it is going to be continued to go upwards. So I changed my position and I made money. Now, at this point here, what do you do? Because this is a very, very good shorting um, pattern. Yeah, it's gone up, it's gone up to a peak. That peak is to there. And then it's gone back down again. Now, ordinarily, 
I would have traded that. But I've been caught out already on this one. And I figured that the overall trend had, it was still going to continue. And lots of people would probably think the same thing. And therefore, there'd be plenty of uh, uh, buyers or sellers who want to be buyers uh, when big people, institutions push the price up. And sure enough, it pushed push the price up. So uh, I actually caught that wave. Now, an analysis on my equity curve as to what that looks like. <laughs> it almost basically looks like this, okay? So on my equity curve, okay, you can see that I was making money and it got to a peak there, which was about 700 pounds or just over 750 pounds. And then obviously I got stopped out. That stop out was where I gave all that money back. Okay, I gave all the money back. Uh, fortunately, uh, to recover. And I recovered, got out at 9.15. Okay, so yes, it would have been nice to have kept that 700 and then gone in at the right time to get the 9.15, but the trading doesn't work like that. And you've got to understand that. You've got to take the rough with the smooth. Okay. Oh. So let's break it down a bit. Break it down. Okay, doke. So breaking it down, end of the day, 915. Very good risk reward ratio. Okay. As you can see. Uh, and out of 21 trades, of 14 was incorrect. Yeah. Uh, so th that's it, really. I just wanted to show you that. Um, that is to say, yeah, sometimes uh, you get the market wrong, but it doesn't, you know, you don't have to, you know, collapse and say that's the end of it, okay? you just got to get a proper fill, see if you've got a proper fill of the market. If you get stopped out and you're still not too sure where it's going to go, then best just saving grace, say, look, I've got stopped out, just finish for the day, yeah? Just finish for the day. You've got your daily stop. You should have a daily stop in mind anyway, Okay, so you just finish it at that. Okay, so just to recap now. Yeah, my little trading plan, if you like, it's very basic, it's very flexible, is to trade what you see. You, obviously, that means you need to spend hours in front of your computer looking at the patterns. I do it on a single asset, so you get to know the comings and goings. On most banks, uh, they, they won't trade multiple assets. You'll have one trader for one asset, and they become a professional of it. So if you've got lots of mixture of assets, you know, you're up against people who've got big money who are focusing on one asset class, okay? So you trade what you see, you trade on probabilities. That is to say that you know that not everything is 100%, and so therefore you um, have to factor in that you can and may be wrong when you do that trade. And then once you've allocated the amount of uh, money or lot size uh, to that trade uh, in, 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 in cognizance of what the probabilities, what you feel the probabilities are, then you have to sit back and accept the risk, okay? I say it's as simple as that. The third part is the hardest part, okay? So, yeah, that, that's it, really. Uh, that's all I've got to say on, on that. Let's stop sharing. That's all I've got to say on that. Uh, I hope that you found it quite useful. Today has been a, a, a particularly good day for me. Uh, I am up. Uh, I'm up a little bit more than I was uh, yesterday, although I've given some back to the market because I'm being a little bit stubborn. But I am up uh, at the moment. It's about a thousand pounds. It's going down. Uh, but there you go. Okay then. Uh, bye bye for now. Well, that's the end of another video. Thank you for your time. If you liked it, please subscribe, like, and also share to three of your friends to spread the word.